Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to give you a little update on my situation as I've been teasing you for a little while now that I actually got a job. So it's the first day of February today and I am actually due to hand in my thesis on the 24th of February. Ooh! which is very very scary but also very very exciting and yes I do in fact have plans for when I finish my PhD. So I'm the type of person who likes to have their whole life planned out and I always said to myself that I wanted to try and find myself a job before I finished my PhD. I didn't want to start the job search as I was finishing my PhD or when I'd already finished because I was scared that I was going to be left out of work for a long time and I didn't really want to be in that position. So I actually started Started looking at jobs probably after summer last year there wasn't really anything that came up which particularly caught my eye. I should mention that my situation is a little bit different because I have a boyfriend here in Aberdeen and he has a very good job and started his job about just over a year ago so we didn't really want to move away anywhere so I was only looking for jobs in Aberdeen which very much limits my choices of jobs. Within Scotland the big hubs for like chemistry or biotech are in Glasgow and Edinburgh which I'm not living in Glasgow and Edinburgh, I live in Aberdeen. And Aberdeen is mainly an oil and gas kind of focused city, but I knew I didn't really want to go into oil and gas. Other than oil and gas, we have two universities, the University of Aberdeen, which I'm currently studying at, and also Robert Gordon University. And we also have a few research institutes. So back in November, I found this job on LinkedIn Jobs actually, and the position was titled Analytical Chemist in Chromatography. So I was thinking, hmm, this this job sounds right up my street. I'm doing a PhD in chemistry currently and I have done a lot of chromatography. The exciting thing about this job was when I was looking at the job description it was saying things like you should be able to publish papers, you should be able to give presentations, you should be able to apply for funding, you should be able to lead your own projects and I was thinking even though the title didn't say so that this sounds very much like a postdoctoral research position which is exactly the type of job that I was wanting after I finished my PhD. So although the job doesn't have that title, it seems like a lot of the responsibilities and a lot of the day-to-day -day tasks and a lot of the research will be very much like what a postdoctoral researcher would do at a university. I don't think I mentioned already, but this job is actually at a research institute, which is very cool. But it's a little bit confusing because a research institute kind of works a little bit like a university and like academia and it's not industry strictly. It's kind of like that middle ground between industry and academia. So I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, sorry. I'm just excited and I wasn't really sure how to structure this video, but back in November I applied for this job. I don't know if you remember my video when I went to Edinburgh for a couple of events and I also visited my friend Dana. Well during my time there, instead of working on my thesis, I was actually applying for this job. So in total it took me about two days to get my CV all polished up and also to write a very good cover letter because I was like I really want this job so I'm going to write a 10 out of 10 cover letter and make sure my CV looks absolutely fantastic and hopefully I can secure this job. Quite honestly I couldn't remember how to write a cover letter so that took me a long time you know looking at different examples and figuring out how I wanted to structure it. I also took time looking at the description of the job, looking at my own skills and my own CV and then thinking how they could go together and how I could bring something new and fresh to the institute um, if they were to hire me for this job. So an interesting thing about this job is that it's actually in a different area of research from what my PhD was in. Listen to me, I'm saying what my PhD was in, what my PhD is in. I'm not finished my PhD yet, but that's okay because even though I enjoy my current area of research, I knew that for me it was more about learning the skills, learning to become a researcher and then seeing what jobs seemed interesting after my PhD and seeing how I could apply those skills and all the techniques and the chemistry that I've learned to some other sort of research job. So I am not worried that the area of research is different. Yes, I will miss marine natural products, which I'm studying currently, but I'm also very excited for this new challenge. So my new area of research is going to be in the area of environmental chemistry. And yes, my current project does dabble a little bit into environmental chemistry, but this is quite different because I'm going to be looking at 
environmental pollutants, environmental contaminants, and I'm going to be using a variety of different techniques to quantify these in our environment in different systems within the environment. So it sounds very, very interesting and it's really cool because it's an applied area of chemistry and it will be beneficial for the agricultural industry, for human health, for animal health and yeah, all of the applications are just so interesting and like I said, I'm just so excited to have a new challenge and to be, you know, learning new skills and to be researching in a completely new area. One of the things about this job is that because it's in a completely different area than what I study in currently, I was quite worried that I was not going to be experienced enough and not knowledgeable knowledgeable enough uh, for this job. The main focus of this job is using LCMS for quantification, so liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, and it's using a completely different technique than what we use in our lab. And I knew that was my downfall, that I didn't have experience in this technique, but I got the job, so it just goes to show that it's not always about you know the specific skills that you already know it can sometimes be about what you can show that you can bring to a new company or to a project and showing all of the soft skills that you have also like if you can write papers if you can bring in grant funding if you can present at conferences and I ticked all of those boxes so there must have been something <laughs> that they liked there. I forgot to mention that this position is actually a tenure track position which means that I have the job for three years which is actually a very long period of time for a kind of postdoctoral research position and tenure track basically means that after this three-year period if I have performed well, if I have managed to bring in some funding and if they can see me being there long term then they can extend my contract and I can become a permanent member of staff. So this was such a huge selling point for me for this job because, like I say, it is very rare in academia and in research to actually get a permanent position. Often the contracts are one year, two years, six months, nine months, three years or four years is the maximum that I have seen. But then your funding runs out for that project and then you need to move on and you need to find another job. So that's super exciting and really nice to know that I at least have stability for three years and we will see what happens after that. But it's great to know that there is the possibility that my position will be extended and I can become permanent at the Institute. So one final thing that I would like to talk about is the kind of application process and the interview process and the timelines for them also. So I think I mentioned I applied back in November for the job. I had to write a cover letter and I also had to do, it was like an online CV system through an agency. And the application was only open for two weeks, which was actually great because it meant that I didn't have to wait too long before finding out if I had an interview. So after the two weeks, I found out that I had the interview for the job. I actually found out the day after uh, the application had closed so it's all very fast and I was invited for an online interview and for the interview I had to prepare a presentation about how I would quantify in uh, environmental contaminants which I've not done before so I had to kind of show that I had done the research this is how I think I would do it and kind of explain that whole process so that was pretty nerve-wracking I'm not going to lie and then the rest of the interview was actually quite technical um, so speaking about the techniques again which I hadn't done so this was just all based on all of my reading and all of my research on environmental chemistry environmental research and also analytical techniques and quantification so there were times during my interview where I was a bit nervous that I said something wrong or I didn't 100% know the answer so after my interview I was actually left thinking I don't know if I have this job I really couldn't tell of course it worked out for the better in the end um but yeah, it was really uncertain at the time. And then I think it was a few days after my interview, I was invited in to have a look around the facilities, which was actually really helpful. It was nice to see all of the labs and see the environment that I would be working in before, you know, knowing if I had the job or not. So I could also decide if I still wanted the job and if I felt comfortable in the space. So that was really great. I got to meet some of the people that worked there. I got to have a coffee and chat with um, some of the members of the interview panel. So that was a really, really nice uh, experience experience and then not long after I went for the tour, I think it was just a few days after that, I was offered the job just before Christmas which was such a lovely start to my Christmas break. I'm not going to lie, it was quite hectic searching for jobs, applying for jobs, doing the interview all whilst trying to write my thesis but I am so glad that I just knuckled down and went through the whole process because then it took stress off of me for the rest of my 
thesis writing period because I know I have a job and that is just giving me that extra motivation now to get everything finished um, so I can start my job at the beginning of March which I am so so excited for. I'm sorry for keeping it a secret for so long about the ins and outs of my new job but I just wanted to make sure you know that everything was figured out and um, all the details were kind of fine-tuned before I shared anything um, but I hope this video was useful uh, for you you know knowing the whole experience my experience of trying to find a job and um, what I was looking for in a job also and if you do have any questions about the whole process please do leave me a comment below and we can have a chat oh one thing I forgot to mention this was actually the first job that I had applied for so I'm very happy that my job searching process was quite short because I don't know how sustainable it would have been to have done that process over and over again whilst trying to write my thesis. I did apply for another job whilst I was finding out about my cu this current job uh, that was to become a lecturer at one of the universities in Aberdeen but the lecturing position was in biomedical science and I am not a biomedical scientist so I was really pushing the boat out there but I thought you know what let's just apply let's see what happens because I'm passionate about teaching I would love to be a lecturer one day that would be amazing maybe we'll see what happens <laughs> and yeah I didn't get that job as I thought I wouldn't so I did face some rejection there also but I knew in the back of my mind that this was the job that I really really wanted so I'm so pleased that they offered me the job. Anyway I'm scared that I'm going to just keep waffling on now so I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching if you liked the video please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. I'm still deciding what to do about my YouTube channel because I'm not sure on my situation once I start my new job but that's to be determined I guess and I'll just keep posting videos as and when I can for the time being and please wish me luck for the rest of February and I will of course keep you updated when I hand in my thesis and I will be posting videos from now until then. I'm not sure how periodically because yeah life is quite busy just now so posting once a week is not always possible but thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me and yes please leave a comment down below and we can have a chat and I will see you in my next video. Bye!